So my final comment this morning is about respect, caring, and sharing, or as I like to say, the ethics and FASD. These are three overarching values that have instructed and guided our people forever. For example, when we, we had laws stemming from these overarching principles that created in traditional times circles of support for expectant parents. We, of course, didn't have alcohol in, in pre-contact times, but we had a strong set of protocols and laws to take care of the mother and baby. A strong message coming from past consultations on health speaks about culture as a way of healing and restoration. We in our communities have both unique circumstances of the traumas of colonization and especially the experiences of residential school. We also have unique resources that can be shared to the benefit of all Yukoners. And I want to emphasize that although FASD is a worldwide phenomena, it is not just it's not just a First Nation issue, it is a priority issue for Yukon First Nations. And, um, and I know from my past experience, um, it's been an issue going back a good 20 years. I don't believe in pussyfooting around by not mentioning First Nation or Aboriginal in the same breath as FASD. FASD in our First Nation communities as well as Aboriginal communities across Canada, and dare I say, across many other countries, is part and parcel of the legacy of colonization. So when we acknowledge that this is an issue in our community, we can also acknowledge that we have resources to work with. In fact, every First Nation community in the Yukon have used cultural camps and traditional activities as a way of bringing people together on the land, as a means of healing and dealing with trauma. When you think about the values or the principles of caring and sharing and respect, they can, they can be used to guide just about anything. So you see, First Nations have resources such as these values that can make a big difference. These are values and guiding principles that have guided our people for thousands of years, and we can use these very same values to guide our approaches to addressing fetal alcohol spectrum disorder.